everybody, welcome back to Sarah's Table. Pew, 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 pew. Can't stop the finger guns. I can't do it. And that's fine. That's, that's fine. Okay. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Sarah Moore. My pronouns are she, her. Um, I'm going to be your host tonight and your, I was going to say game master, but also player. It's a solo RPG. I don't know what you call it. I'm going to be all of those things. I'm going to be your favorite person. I'm going to remind you to have some water. My water bottle is mysteriously gone. I don't know what happened to it. Um, anyway, you are probably also dehydrated, and I promise to go get mine at the break. Um, but have a sip of water. Uh, okay. Um, hi. Hi. Like I said, I'm going to do a solo RPG today. But before we get into that, um, I thought I would give you a little update about what's been going on in Sarah land, Sarah Ville, Sarah Tin. Hmm. I don't know what it is exactly, but I'm sure that there are probably like a lot of rainbows and pink and joy and cupcakes. So, all right, let's uh, see what's been going on with me. I just got back from Gary Con. I know it's been couple of weeks, but I do feel like I have been still recovering <laughs> from going to Gary Con. It was a great con. It's one of my favorites, honestly. Um, it's just like a sweet, homey weekend where I'm in a really beautiful hotel and it feels like I am surrounded by a ton of friends and I just get like to hang out and play games. It was really great. I feel like it was really good for networking. I feel like I made a lot of great connections. Um, but more so, I feel like I got to slow down a little bit. I got to play a couple of really awesome games with some good game masters. Um, Jason Charles Miller, David Nett got to do some stuff with with the Prog Core Fantasy team. Um, I got to meet up with the Strange Hollow team. Um, and I just did that two episode arc uh, previously on on the show. Everything seems to be going really great. Um, and I'm very excited. Also, uh, The Crowned, which is the the RPG that I helped co-design, is we are getting ready for uh, being in fulfillment. We have ordered all of the books. The backer kit surveys have gone out. We have about half of them back. Uh, if you are watching this. And you are one of the people that needs to fill out their survey. Check your email. Please tell us where to send your book because I can't wait to get this book into your hands. In fact, I'm not, hey, listen, look it. Here it is right here. Ooh, isn't it so pretty? It's so pretty. It's so pretty. Um, this is the one that I run out of, so there's notes and things in it. But it's just beautiful. Ooh. Yeah, anyway, check your email. Get on that. There is. There is still a little bit of time, but I want to get these in your hands. Um, and with that in mind, we have like another a whole bunch of more stuff coming up in the pipeline. Um, we have several things planned, a book of modules, as well as uh, an expansion that talks about more things that you can do with your familiars, which I think is pretty cool. Um. You may have also heard me talking about The Vanishing Lands, which is an RPG that my partner Jeff Moore made uh, that I did some like auxiliary writing for. I did some microfictions for it and lots of playtesting. And we have ordered a proof of that. And it is on the way to the house right now. It should be here in the next couple of days. Um, and if it is all good, which fingers crossed, I think it will be. Um, we're going to be able to have that up for sale in the next uh, couple weeks, maybe a month. So probably in, before June, both The Vanishing Lands and The Crown will be commercially available for you to buy. And when that happens, I will make sure that everybody here has a link and that you guys can go pick it up um, because they're both really great games and I'm excited for you to play them. Have a couple of other things going on. I am in talks with AJ Winters from Winters Tales over in the Grand Land of Australia. I pointed this way. 
I don't know that the way that I am facing that Australia is this way. It's probably not. But I really, I really cannot confirm nor deny that that is. So just pretend uh, Australia is that way. Actually, wherever you are sitting right now, Australia is that way. You're welcome. It's like Jack Sparrow's compass where it just like points to whatever you want most. And right now it's lesbians. Yeah. The thing I'm going to tell you about is that we are negotiating doing season two of Thirsty Sword Lesbians over on Winter's Tales. Um, it was such a, a lovely role-playing experience, truly. I got to GM a group of really talented RP folk. And like, it started as this is going to be a big joke and it's just going to be a bunch of sex jokes and a bunch of really funny stuff. And we got into like really emotional rewarding role-playing experiences um everybody was crying a lot in like a, a good way like we just like emotionally big releases um they did tell me yet again that once we start season two just to take the gloves off gloves off don't hold back destroy our emotions sarah so i'm gonna do it and that will be coming up very soon Speaking of Australia and that Thirsty Sword Lesbians arc, it is going to be a fundraiser because I am going to go to PAX Australia this year in October. I'm saying it out loud on the internet so that everybody here can hold me accountable. We are going to have ways for you to donate so that it can be um, a way to get me over to PAX Australia. Turns out that uh, tickets plane tickets to Australia are pretty expensive. And so I am going to be really hustling. Um, I will probably have a lot of things coming up at other ways that you can support me. Should you want to help me get to Australia? You know, I'm going to probably have a lot more things over on my Ko-Fi coffee, Kofi. I don't know how to pronounce that word, but ko-fi.com slash pixies up pins. Nope. Pixies and pins you guys what am i saying anyway i'm gonna have a bunch of stuff out on that could have a lot of writing that you can you know support if you want to uh you can hop into my thirsty stored lesbians and game and you can um affect the story by buying things giving the players buffs giving me buffs if you would like to um I believe there's always a tier where if you donate $50 I just make it more gay which is a very popular tier and feel free to come on over and hit that one as many times as you want um <clears throat> so that's what we're doing we're gonna go over there and i'm i'm gonna do some stuff and while i'm down in australia i'm also going to head over to uh the winter's tale studio in western australia and i'm gonna record an arc of the crown it's all all rolling into one like just like a really delicious swiss roll kick I'm probably going to eat some Tim Tams. This has all been a really good update. And I'm so glad you're here with me for <laughs> what we're talking about. Um, I can't think of anything else that I might have, I mean, going on in, in the RPG world. Oh, I'm a liar. Yes. Uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow and Sunday, I am going to be over on Dork Tales channel doing some extra life stuff to raise money for extra life. Really great cause. Come and check me out. I'm doing an episode of The Crown on Saturday. I'm going to be playing a kobold on Sunday. Her name is Nock, and she is a complete chaos goblin. I am holding the deck of many things, and I p punch everybody. And I have this, I was told that I have this feat that allows me to, like, have like magic mage hands that can punch also outside of my hands. And so when I am punching them in the face, I can also use my magic mage hands to punch inside them. I don't know how it works, but you should come and check it out. And it's on Sunday on um, twitch.tv slash dorktail. So extra life. We are going to do a bunch of fundraising for charity. Um, yeah. I mean, that's, a, I think... 
I think those are my covered everything on my list of RPG stuff in life things. My oldest child just got back from Japan, which seems like the most amazing trip. And I was incredibly jealous. The pictures are really great. Uh, we are wrapping up a bunch of domestic things at home and I am getting ready to head back out to Seattle for another episode of Actor Oki. So I'm basically all over the internet forever. This is again, one of those situations where if you just say my name into your computer screen three times, I will probably show up in a Zoom call. So I need you to use that responsibly and not for evil, I think. I don't know. You know what? I trust you. Do what you want to do, you know? Anyway, hi. How do you feel about getting into a game? Let's get into a game. Let's do it. You and me. Um, so today, I am going to be playing something called Notorious. You get to be a intergalactic bounty hunter, which feels to me like maybe that is my final form. I'm very excited about it. Um, and I, I decided that I wasn't going to build anything beforehand, and so I want you to see the process of us building this intergalactic bounty hunter, which means I'm going to roll on all of the tables live here on stream. Ba, 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 ba. Um, and I'm I'm pretty jazzed about it. You don't need a lot of things to to play this game. It says you need player sheet, pencil, an eraser, two six sided die, optionally in different colors. And somewhere to write your story. Um, the somewhere to write my story is going to be here in this little Zoom window. But I'm going to write all this down here. Maybe make a few notes in my handy dandy notebook. Which I clearly use too much because I can't find a sheet that is clean. Yes, I can. There it is. Good job, Sarah. Okay, um, there's also a note that most of the tables in this book, because everything has a table, you can you can obviously choose, but you can roll for it. Um, most of the tables in this book are available online as well. And so you have the option to not have to, like, use use your dice if you want. You can just click on it and it'll do it for you. But I'm, I'm going to roll because I'm going to roll. Also, I have these really fun dice. Um, they're made by Gamers Plus. Um, and it, they did a whole Pride series. And so I have the... Here we go. I have the uh, the regular Pride rainbow flag, but I also ordered... Whoa, focus. Hello? There we go. I also ordered the bisexual flag because anybody who knows me knows me. I'm knows that I am a super bi. Um, and they're really pretty. And I ordered them through my local game store, which is uh, Dice Dojo over in Chicago, up on Milwaukee. Very cool place if you have not been. Uh, but they're like a little squishy. You guys know those those erasers that you had when you were in school that were in really fun shapes. They didn't erase anything at all, but they looked really fun and adorable. Uh, that's what these dice feel like. They're silicone, so they're squishy. They roll really nicely, but they are so quiet. Wait, listen. Didn't really hear anything. Um, nothing is being noise gated out. They just don't make noise, which is really cool to have on stream. Um, so uh, go go check that out. Also, like, tell everybody what kind of an ally you are and get some cool, squishy uh, pride flag 
dies. Okay. I keep getting distracted. This is like super distracto modes. We are in a million side quests today. And I got to tell you, I'm I'm not mad about it. Um, there are two separate ways to play Notorious. The first one is called story mode. You create and write a short story as you play, responding to the prompts and questions you're presented with during each encounter. Still roll dice to resolve combat or events and um, put your basic notes like in your character sheet or on a piece of paper. But then afterwards, you're going to be turning it into short slash long form fiction. And there is an intergalactic war. And this is something that you are going to be sort of exploring much more in depth in this world. You are basically finding your nomad's place in the galaxy. And so you're really going to dig more into the politics and all that stuff. There's also there's also a mode called arcade mode, which is kind of exactly as it sounds. You're going to write your basic notes on your player sheet. You track your stuff. You roll your dice to resolve the combat. And then you go. Go on to the next one. It says you may consider the prompts and questions you're presented with, but there's no need to document your answers. You're going to be left with a very short artifact of play that represents who your target was, how your hunt unfolded, and the allies and enemies you made along the way. It is really like playing a super fast video game. This is like a side-scroller video game versus like a long-form RPG video game. I had originally come in here thinking that I was going to do arcade mode, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll do more. Uh, you have four ways that you can interact with people. They are speak, threaten, attack, and recruit. And that feels all pretty self-explanatory. Da, da, da. We're going to be rolling some dice. There's a lot of ways that you can do all of these things. And the book is very pretty and very comic booky. Like, there's not a ton of art, but there are... There are like little panels in the pages to break things up that have like a, a line art of a bunch of the kind of weapons that you could have. It looks very much like if you were playing a video game and there was just like a, a very simple screen of like, oh, you could have this knife or this gun or this grenade or this ninja star. I hope I get ninja stars. It's going to be good. Okay. Who wants to build their nomad? I'm going to roll on the table. Okay. There are six main kinds of nomads that you can be. The armor, the assassin, the bot, the brute, the scoundrel, and the uncanny. And I'm leaving it fully up to the dice. Here is my die. Here we go. I rolled a five. I am the scoundrel. A scoundrel, your stylish exterior and cocky personality hide a mercurial talent for scraping your way out of precarious situations. Yeah, that feels correct. Because if I'm going to be an intergalactic bounty hunter, I am going to be as close to Han Solo as I possibly can. Thank you, Dice. So nice of them. Moving along. Okay, so now I have to go down. There is art of each of the kinds of bounty hunters. In fact, um, on the thumbnail that was made by Tina Levitt for today's episode, she put all of the different types of uh, nomads on there with me at the table, which is very fun. 
So you can take a look. The scoundrel is the one that looks like a pigeon with a giant hat on and a big old gun. Um, he's like wearing an eye patch. He's very cool. I feel very cool. Let's see what we got. All right. So uh, my loadout, I have a ranged weapon. It is a trusty laser pistol or two. Oh, great. I get two. Okay, that gives me plus four to my attack. I have a melee, which is a stun baton. Which I apparently get two rolls with. I get plus two for first roll and then plus one afterwards. And I am in... My outfit, I love this. My outfit is a wide-brimmed hat. A thigh holster. And a duster coat. I don't know if you guys can hear the train in the background. But it feels very correct for how I am describing <laughs> this this whole situation like i understand that it's out in space but it's really just like a big space western right like i am a bounty hunter that rides through town all right let's figure out what my origin is there is a table right here consider how this influences your attitude towards others i get to roll my d6 yet again four I am a former sheriff of a peaceful town. Plagued. Plagued by raids from Targ Cartel hoverbike gangs. That seems bad. Nobody likes it when the cartel comes into, into town. And I really think I want to build out this, but I'm gonna do I'm gonna do my roles first, and then we are going to come back in and talk about what my rich and compelling backstory is going to be. I also have a scar. Let's see what my scar is. Five. It's a big tattoo. The skin on your chest is still branded with a prominent tattoo you now regret. Oh, this is going to be good. I can't wait to talk about how, what my tattoo is of and what I have and all that good stuff. Let's figure out what my trigger is. Oh, I dropped the die again. All right, trigger. You were exiled by your people. Oh no, you were exiled by your people for a heinous crime you did not commit. Yikes. Oh no, okay, well. We're going to have to come back to that because I, I feel very much like we need to determine what's happening there. I'm going to roll to determine my species. Every planet in Notorious hosts a diverse range of characters. To generate a character species, roll two dice and add the results together. Choose a name from the corresponding list. Okay, so there are a bunch. There are 12. One of them is a bot. I am not a bot, so I don't have to roll for that. That one is not, not one that I have to deal with. But let's let's figure out what species I am. Five plus three is eight. I am a goal, G-H-O-L, which is a horned species. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's roll for my name. Bop, bop, six. My name is Cheeto Robe. C-H-E-D-O. Cheeto. R-O-B-A-Y. Robe. I think maybe she goes by Chi. Personality. Although each species in Notorious has a unique look, they all share a common set of personality traits. Let's see what we got. Number two, skittish, nervous, tense. And now <clears throat> I need to answer one of these prompts to see. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and, and roll the dice again. And if it's even, I'm going to answer the uh, second question. And if it's odd, I'm going to answer the first question. It is odd. First question. What do they worry is going to go wrong again? Ooh. I think that they are worried that... Let's go back into your backstory. You were exiled by your people. I think they are worried that people are not going to believe them so they are incredibly almost obsessive about documenting everything because they don't want they don't want anyone to to like disbelieve what they are doing okay that seems like, it's not going to be a problem at all. Super obsessive with documentation. I think they have both written. Um, and then I think they have, like, a little voice recorder. And I think they are always talking to themselves in this little voice recorder and then um, transferring it over into written and or vice versa. Uh voice recorder is maybe built into their wrist. We're, we're in space. There's probably some cool stuff in space. So I think that they have a little something that they can like hit and it'll start recording for them. Maybe on the inside, this feels good because then they can just bloop and start talking. That's what I'm gonna say. Okay. So the next thing that I would be establishing is the target that I'm going to be checking out. But before I do that, I want to go back and give a little bit more build out to Cheeto Chi with their like sheriff and all, like, you know, being the former sheriff and sort of their origin and their scar and the trigger. Let's check it out. So, they used to be a sheriff of a, a sleepy little town. I think they got into law enforcement because it seemed uh, capital I important, like worthwhile. They were going to be helping people, and they really loved that idea. But I don't think a lot of people took her very seriously, and so she ended up in this tiny town that, like, sure, you can go be the sheriff of this town because nothing ever really happens there and so it'll be fine and you can go do it and she comes into town and nobody really gives her much thought you know what do they even need sheriff here for there's not really anything happening i think this is a sheriff and deputy and that is it for the entire town and not long after she arrives the deputy is probably pretty upset that somebody else has been given this post when he should have been. He's been there longer. And that is when the Targ cartel starts sending in hoverbike gangs. And I think that the cartel was working with the deputy because then they had all of the sheriff's movements and they knew when she was not going to be in town. And it always looked very suspicious because 
they only hit when she was not able to really do anything about it. And so the town thought that she was the one that was like causing all the problems and they exiled her from the town. I think also the tattoo you now regret skin on your chest is still branded with a prominent tattoo. You now regret. I think she was really bitter when she left and she was pretty scared and angry and so she went and she got a tattoo of the deputy's name so that she would not forget him he is the reason that she does not have a place that she can call home right now and i think probably over the years her anger simmered down and she is not in a position now like she used to be and i think she just i think she just now sort of is ashamed of that tattoo because of course she would never forget whose fault it is but in her sort of young impetuous life i think she she thought this is gonna make me look really tough and then when i find him and i can and make him pay for what he did i can i can cross it off and i can like show show him like i've been carrying him around like this this rock in my chest for years just waiting to find him again and it's less cool now and more sort of sad and i think she has found that in herself and so she's not going to get it up, get it lasered off or or removed or anything. Now it's sort of a like an, a reminder that you shouldn't just jump into anything because because it is a problem. Okay. Did all the things. Hey, let's get our contract. We'll get our contract now. With your nomad, nomad established, it's now time to determine who the target is, the person that you are hunting. We're going to roll for their species and choose a name. Let's go back up to the species. Beep, 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 beep. Three plus. Three is six. They are a they are reptilian. Here we go. That species is Taylock. And their name is Nass Grask. Sounds like a criminal. Nass Grask. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Roll for their personality. Considering how this detail would be posted on a bounty. They are solemn. What treasured item do they always keep close? I think in the bounty, it would say that they don't show much emotion. Probably pretty even keeled and quiet. Which is one of the reasons why I think they can probably escape notice for as long as they have because they're they don't draw attention to themselves but i think that they are carrying like a little glowing orb it's probably pretty small it's probably about about this size so they can keep it in their hand and it's worth an incredible amount of money um but also it seems to be very sentimental to them for some reason, which I'm sure we will find out. We are going to roll and find out what planet we are going to. 
All right, here we go. Planet number three is Iyama. A mega urban planet. That makes a lot of sense. I like the idea of doing a bounty hunt in a lot of urban sprawl. I think that it is a lot easier to hide among millions of people than it is to hide out in the desert. You know, and I, I disappeared into this small town. Sure, but if somebody comes into that small town, you very clearly don't belong there. But if you are in a major metropolitan city with a bunch of different kinds of people, it's probably a lot easier to blend in. Um, I actually would love to do a little bit more with this planet. Let's let's take some more time with this planet. And so before I do that, uh, I am going to give myself a little bit of a bio break. Um, I'm going to go grab myself uh, my water because I don't know what happened to it. I'm sure it's just out of reach. Uh, and I'm going to get myself a little bit of a snack and then I will be right back in a couple of minutes and we will do some more. Okay, bye.
Welcome back from the break. Pew, 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 pew. I don't know. Hi. Hi, everybody. I'm Sarah Moore. Pronouns are she, her. I have my water this time. Everybody, just uh, take a sip with me. It's going to be good. Hmm. We are back. We're playing Notorious. I am a galactic bounty hunter named Chi. And um, we are trying to track down Nas Grask, who is on the planet Iyama. And um, the note that we have here is that you land your ship in the ruins of an old factory on the outskirts of a major city. Here on this planet, there are a bunch of sparse wasteland, a sea of junk, menacing depths, underground tunnels. Perfect place to go looking for a criminal. Let's find out what the predominant species is. Five Pellucid. Uh, I'm going to look up what that is. I'm just making a note. If my pen will work. Species is a Pellucid. Which is not what I am, <clears throat> and not what the person I am tracking is. Let's take a look. Pellucid are Pellucid. crystalline people. Well, that's really interesting. They're like made out of crystals. Super cool. Prominent destination. There are six listed, so... Our tip says, six, that Nass is in the old Empire Palace, which doesn't seem good because I have seen Star Wars, and so um, the Empire is probably bad. Um, the factions here are the old Empire is the controlling faction. Challenging is Red Moon, and the minor is a new uprising so i am trying to go into the controlling factions palace to collect on a bounty which seems pretty problematic all right let's see so we're going to check out our client. We're going to find out who our client is. The new uprising, who, as we know from just chat chatting about it, is um, a minor competing faction on this planet. And they have a bounty out on Nazgrask. And let's find out what the reason is. We're going over here. And I'm going to go ahead and, and roll again. So there are some options. The New Uprising, a growing force in the galaxy, consisting mostly of citizens from oppressed worlds who wish to see an end to the old empire's harsh dictatorship. Brave, skillful, and resourceful. Feels like, <clears throat> feels like maybe we are working for the good guys, the good guys. The target helps to engineer and construct a devastating old empire super weapon. We are absolutely the rebel alliance here. I am assisting the rebel alliance against the empire. I love it. Clearly they made this world's equivalent of the Death Star. <laughs> and, uh, I'm going to go get them. Made the... Super weapon. Goodness me. Seems bad. Can we talk about that for a minute? It seems bad. So the story of your hunt for the target is told through a loop, with you rolling on a series of tables and reacting to prompts. You'll explore the wilderness of a planet until you reach a destination, then you'll set out once more to explore. So there are a couple of tables, and the tables are 
you're going to roll on the exploration table. And then we're going to roll on the destination table and complete a prompt. And it's it's circular until we have caught them. We need to find three leads. And then, and when we encounter our third lead, that person becomes the target. And face, you face off in one last dramatic showdown. And then you are done once you have confronted your target. Okay. Great. And I have on here, I have a couple of things. My loadout uh, adds to... Most of the stuff that my loadout does adds to my um, attack. Exploration tables. Wow, there are several tables. All right. Let's see what happens. Let's, let's explore. Let's give it a shot. Here we go. All right. To use the exploration tables, roll 2d6. One determines which of the three tables you'll roll on, and the other is the event. If you get repeat events as you play, it may be fun to fit them into your story. All right, so otherwise you can re-roll for a different prompt. So my first roll is a one. No sign of your target, but something interrupts your hunt. And we're going to roll once on the exploration events table. Also a one. Buddy, you're offered shelter for the night in the home of a harmless looking local. Try to speak to them by the campfire. Then roll a dice. Let's see. A two. Oh no, you disagree about something trivial and they become hostile. How did you clumsily disrupt their nocturnal routine? I think I just stumbled into the camp. I'm just like. probably put my foot in my mouth i'm not um really good at local customs and i think ooh, i bet i ate something i wasn't supposed to that they had like set out as an offering um to to local folk and then and then off i went so good that's it's not great um seems like a problem I didn't get any leads and I it, no, nothing happened. So I really just I messed somebody up. Whoops. All right, and now I'm going down to the destination table. Six. You arrive at a fortified base or palace run by the controlling faction. That's not good. Resolve both. Okay, gain one notoriety. It's good. I just like went straight there. I was like, hey guys, what's up? Um, if it's for a higher or a hostile guard approaches, it is not or higher, luckily. And then I'm going to roll twice on the destination events table. If you are asked to roll twice, resolve the first event fully or rolling before rolling for a second. Whoops. Okay, let's see what happens. Three. People travel from all over the all over to visit the clinic of a renowned healer or doctor. It seems their services are in demand. Roll a die. Six. You eventually get to meet the asset and may try to recruit them. What miraculous deeds or specialist knowledge draws in these crowds? I think that this person, this doctor slash healer, is... I think that they are incredibly skilled at not leaving scars. So people want to come in I think they can probably also even repair old scars. 
so this is a situation where people come in and and it's like they're getting wiped clean of their their previous injuries. Um, yeah, so I think that's pretty pretty wild. I, I go in and see him. I try to recruit him. It does not work. He's happy where he's at. That's fine. No worries. Okay, my second event. Six. You see an unaffiliated mercenary or rebellious citizen, civilian being intimidated by a hostile soldier or guard. Oh, no. Roll a die. Two. Something about the scene sets off your trigger and you walk away. What building or statue were they defacing and what did the graffiti depict? My trigger, which is exiled by your people for a heinous crime you did not commit. Um, I think this is something to do. I think they're talking about how the the local law enforcement is is working with the factions, um, which is honestly probably true, which is also true of what happened in my case. It just wasn't me. Um, and so I think that they just don't want to be, she doesn't want to be involved. So she just walks away. Just like, I can't, I cannot do it. All right. We're back up here to our exploration Let's see what happens. Five. Your notoriety is three or higher. You encounter a lead. Otherwise, roll once on the exploration table. Okay. My notoriety still not there yet. Rolling once. Six. You wake up in your camp to find something personal has been stolen. A clear set of tracks extends off into the distance. Roll a die. Four. Hunt down and confront three small hostiles wielding shock rifles. How have the scavengers put your possession to much more inventive use? I think that they took just like a, a, a small pouch that I used to carry things around in. They left the stuff that was inside of it. And I think they are using it um, in a, in like a, a trap um, so that they can use it for hunting. And they've like rigged it up with something. Uh, all right. Back to the destinations. Ba, 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 ba. Two. You arrive in a small outpost or enclave run by the Challenging Faction, which is the one that hired me. Challenging Faction? No, they're, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, choose one. Search for anyone who might know your target to gain one favor. Speak with a local who works here, then rest to gain one motivation. I'm going to gain a favor. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that I find somebody who has a lead on uh, Nass. Um, heard he likes to hang out in uh, a particular bar. Get the name of it. Um, for lack of a better one, I'm going to call it the hole in the wall because that is the one that I always go with. Okay. Six, nothing eventful happens. Gain one motivation and roll one die. One, what peaceful local activity do you spend time observing? I think there's like a little festival happening. I think that they are very chill. I think that it's like maybe some, some outdoor music, some outdoor food. We love it. Okay. Six. You arrive. I'm back at that. I go back to the palace. I'm back there. I, I don't know why. I gain a notoriety. It's still not four. Um, I roll twice on the destination events table. Oh, boy. Okay. First one. Is. 
A large group of soldiers from the controlling faction are here. There's no way to avoid catching their attention. Oh, boy. One, a number equal to your role of hostile soldiers approach you. Why have so many soldiers gathered here right now? They are protecting the person that you are trying to use, um, trying to get as a... <laughs> That's, this is what I've decided. They are protecting Nast. They know Nast did a thing. They want him to make more super weapons for them. Um, and so they... They approach me. Um, luckily, I am able to get out. I stun baton them. Heading on my way. Back to the exploration table. Do, 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 do. Beep, 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 beep. All right. My notoriety is only at two, so I don't encounter a lead. Um, but I roll once on the exploration table. You find a locked crate painted with the logo of the controlling faction. It's probably fallen off the back of a speeder. Roll a die. Six. You find a useful stash of ammo and fuel can canisters. Gain one motivation. Who is this crate, in crate intended to resupply and why did the pickup fail? I think that this crate was um, heading out to a smaller outpost. I think that they were doing their best to try to get some folk out to, you know, getting getting some more ammo, some more weapons out because they're they're controlling the whole planet. They're trying to explain, um, expand into more neighborhoods. I think that they are. I mean, they're the bad guys. I'm having a really hard time, like, not wanting to just blow them all up. Beep, 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 beep. All right. All right, destination. Five. You arrive at a small spaceport run by the challenging faction. Resolve both in one notoriety. Done it. If it's five or higher, a hostile guard approaches. Nope. Roll twice on the destination events. First one is you visit the local nomads guild rep to report on your progress. They've chosen a quiet place, but you're not alone. A cloaked hostile pull, pushes, uh, pulls a concealed laser pistol and attacks. Well, luckily I've got a trusty laser pistol as well. And I have a much higher. And I rolled a six. So I um I defeat this other person who has paid them to ambush you at the Nomads Guild. I think that it's the old empire. I mean, that makes a lot of sense, right? They don't want me to come and get Nass. I heard that's who I'm looking for. Goodness. Um, my second one, same t table. You visit a dingy cantina where the locals eye you suspiciously. The barkeep offers you a drink to avoid any trouble. Two inebriated hostels at the bar say they don't like your kind in here. How do the onlookers in the cantina react to this sudden confrontation? I think they ignore it i mean this is a thing that happens a lot um nobody is actively threatening me with a weapon and i'm in here just looking for nas and it's not happening so i skedaddle um i think i get i i get the gist of what's happening here you are slowly building up your notoriety it takes you a long time to do it um, I think I'm going to just like chat a little bit about the game, um, and then uh, and and then uh, wrap it up. I will finish this encounter probably in the next, maybe on over on my Ko-Fi that I have been 
that that I have been um, teasing that I'm going to be doing more stuff in. Um, yeah, I mean, it does really feel, first of all, it absolutely feels like I'm in Star Wars. A lot of the prompts are very Star Wars-y, and that's very fun. I felt like I was Han Solo. I, I like that. Um, I also felt like... I was in a video game. I mean, like this looping kind of thing very much feels like I am going, like I haven't found the right quest yet, right? Like here I am. I'm just, I haven't quite gotten there yet. Um, I just have to keep keep going to these places and what's next and who is this little side quest that I'm doing and I just have to keep, keep looping. Uh, I do think it would be a lot easier if the... I think it would be a lot easier if it was written out and if I had a physical copy of the book because I feel like then I could have sort of each of the the tables marked so that I could get get between them. Um but yeah, I had a really good time. This this was notorious and I'm going to finish it up over on my Ko-Fi so go check that out. Um Listen, I'm Sarah Moore. My pronouns are she, her. You can find me all over the internet at Pixies and Pins. Um, I You can find me here every Friday night on twitch.tv slash TV on Sarah's Table at 5 p.m. Pacific. Next week, we are playing the new release of Cobalt Date My Baby. Look how sweet he is. We love him. Um, very excited about that. That's by Ninth Level Games. And then um, after that, we are going to be doing another installment of Retrograde by Grant Howitt with the team that has been doing it. Um, Caustic Phoenix and that great gentleman. And then after that, we're going to bring in Jason Morningstar and we are going to play Cowboys with Big Hearts. And that's going to be dope. Um we have some other stuff coming up, but you're just going to have to sign back in. Come back and see us to find out. Uh, thank you to Notorious. This game is very fun. Um, and I'm excited to see where my bounty hunter goes. I don't think she's a terribly good bounty hunter, but she is doing her best. And that's all we can ask for. Uh, also, thank you to my team over at Gen Con TV, Marcus Mays, for um, pushing that go button, making sure that we are always running smoothly. To Gen Con and Peter Atkinson for trusting me and giving me this platform. And to Jeff Moore, who is my personal tech support and also my editor, thank you so much for helping me out. We love you. Um, and thank you to all of you at home. If you have made an RPG, please message me. I would love to hear about it. I would love to feature it here on the show. This is what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, give me all those sweet, sweet RPG action. Um, and and come say hi if you see me all over the place. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's it. So as always, keep making art and keep being art. We'll see you next time.